Hello, class. Uh, this is Mr. Walter. And I'm Mr. Martyron. How are you? And today we are going to do our first flipped classroom lesson of the year, which is Early Civilizations Part 1. Now, Mr. Walter, what's a flipped classroom? Well, I'm so glad you asked, Mr. Martyron. A flipped classroom is when we deliver content to you at home through this video, and your job is to take notes so that when you come into class, uh, we can concentrate on activities and other things, and uh, you will be prepared to with this content for any test that might come up. Now, it's important, as you're watching this video, you can, number one, you should be filling out your Flip Classroom Ancient Civilizations uh, review guide, but also you can pause the video, you can go back, or if you feel compelled to do so, you can watch it again. Which I'm sure you'll all do. Alrighty, let's get started. Beginning of Civilization. Alright, class. Uh, so, <clears throat> essentially, when a group of hunter and gatherers uh, start to become more advanced, essentially they adopt features, and eight basic features uh, will make them a actual civilization. They'll go from just being a hunters and gatherers group to a full-fledged civilization. And the first thing that is on the list that we come across are cities. Once we see a civilization having cities, we know that they're becoming more advanced. All right, the second major feature is going to be central government. And what we mean by that is very simply, as these cities emerge, there's going to be a level of hierarchy. So someone's going to be in charge, and that person's going to delegate, and other people will fall in line behind um, the leader, and there's going to have a, some sort of organization of government and protection. Uh, then we'll start to see complex religion develop. And this means that the religion will have maybe gods, goddesses. These gods might have personalities of some sort, and we'll start to see rituals develop. Now, Mr. Walter, what were the early religions? Were they polytheistic or were they monotheistic? Polytheistic. That means more than one god. Great. Next, we'll have job specialization. And what this means, guys, is that as the economy slowly begins to grow, people are going to become more focused and more specialized in their jobs. For example, people will move from just being farmers to being uh, builders, blacksmiths, etc. Uh, then we'll start to see social classes develop. As we get more and more people uh, in this civilization and the population expands, we'll start to see upper class, middle class, lower class people. Now, everyone can get behind the sixth major feature, which is arts and architecture. As civilization begins to grow, houses will become a little bit more elaborate because the social classes are growing, and also because of religion, people will start to demonstrate their faith through the arts, early pictograms. Uh, then we'll start to see things like public works, and this is with the government providing uh, cities with uh, maybe irrigation systems or walls, or possibly even you'll see libraries and schools. And the last major feature, and this is the big one, everything 1 through 7 has been leading up to this, and that is writing. Once civilization can begin to write and copy things down on, on some sort of paper or stone, they're now leaving their mark. They're now creating their own history, leaving a mark that, in fact, this civilization existed. And it allows us, as people in the present, to be able to look back and see the written records that they left behind. Alrighty, map of the world, here we go. So the Middle East, um, which is uh, where modern-day Iraq and Iran are, this is where civilization actually starts. And those two blue lines, where are those, Mr. Martyron? Well, that has to be Mesopotamia, which means the land between two rivers. And it looks to me that those two lines are, in fact, the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Yeah, these are probably the most important rivers in ancient world history, uh, only second to maybe the Nile uh, for being rivers where uh, ancient civilizations kind of grew up. Now, Mr. Walter, why are rivers so important to us? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Uh, well, rivers do a lot of great things for people, and they allow for civilization to develop. For instance, right along a river usually has good conditions for farming. Alrighty. Also, guys, during the early time periods, floods, we think them as bad things, but floods were actually good back then, okay? Because it allowed for silt to deposit along the riverbanks. That actually kept the land fertile. Uh, also, rivers will attract animals, which is another great source of food. Okay, rivers also supply water and transportation. Now, even modern cities still um, are established along rivers. For instance, Paris is established along the Seine River. All right. Um, New York City is located on the Hudson River. 
Washington, D.C. is located on the Potomac River. London is on the Thames River. So these are great examples of where cities, even today, are uh, established along rivers. Alrighty, so what drove governments to become more powerful and more complex, you ask? Well, essentially, as there's more people, you have to maintain a large food supply, which means you have to cooperate on a large scale. And so that's we'll have things like large-scale irrigation projects, large-scale granary, uh, you know, places where people keep their food for the winter. So we'll start to see that. All right, so who probably had power first, second, third? Well, the answer probably is going to be priests, warrior kings, and kings. Now, when you think of priests, don't think of priests in the modern-day sense. But these are, are high priests, high pa powered individuals that have access to the polytheistic gods. Um, and if you ask where their power came from and where people start obeying them, usually uh, people believe that these priests and kings had um, basically a special connection with the gods. Alrighty, and over time, what was the setup to maintain governments? Well, that's going to be bureaucracy, and you want to write this word down because a bureaucracy is a system for managing government. All right, and so the last thing we're going to talk about is the evolution of writing. So first, uh, we have ancient cave paintings where, you know, pictures describe an idea, and we, we obviously we see hunting going on here. All right, also, this is one of the earliest forms of writing. It's called cuneiform, all right? And cuneiform was used primarily to record farming transactions. What you're looking at in this slide is not a Twitter update, not a tweet, but it is a receipt for farming property. Uh, now, along with cuneiform, we start to see the um, evolution of hieroglyphics and Sanskrit writing. That takes us to probably the most important person in early civilizations, the scribe. Now, how many of you guys, when you're broken into groups, you delegate the writing to the mo to the person with the neatest handwriting well it's not too dissimilar from thousands of years ago a scribe is a professional who pay who is paid to learn and read and write and keep records for the king and this meant that this person the scribe was very powerful in the ancient civilizations uh, this is something that we'll actually be dealing with in class this is called Hammurabi's code and it was the first written code of laws and it was actually if you if you look on the um, on the stone uh, little words are written in there, and, and they give um, the rules and laws for ancient Babylon. All right. Ah, there we go. And this is an example of some of the codified laws, and we're going to take a very close look at these laws uh, tomorrow in class. And the last thing that we wanted to show you is that although we're talking about um, the Middle East, which is to the uh, left of your screen. Uh, to the west. Yeah, to the west. Uh, other... Other civilizations also developed at this time. It's really important for you guys to understand that even though we're just talking about the Fertile Crescent in the Middle East, uh, the Indus River Valley grew, uh, and the, the uh, Yangtze River people developed in Central Asia. All three of these cultures have all this in common, that they all developed in a common latitude. Great. So you can now uh, stop. Uh, we're going to stop the video and uh, hopefully just review and make sure you got the notes. Hey, well, 